would be necessary to account for the humanity of man. Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's anti also. Yes. Certainly. That's why I always felt it. at the same time that also was full of insight mm. in some respects and he's the first to define certain essential things. And at the same time, that his view of religion and the opposition between religion and, uh, in a way, uh, the part of culture which is necessary, mm. indispensable, positive. Mm. You see, there's, in Rousseau, you could uh, write a thesis about the positive culture is the one which is not religious and mm. negative. Mm. Is a, it's not quite visible because also is, is a very tricky character, mm. Mm. very powerful in many mm. of his definitions. Mm. But uh, at the same time, the opposition is there, and uh, I'm sure he would find me uh, too favorable to religion. Mm. Ah, <laughs> yes, 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 he probably would. But would he cope with the um, the the, the, the uh, flexibility, perhaps we should say, of your theory, which um, uh, accounts both for uh, the violence, um, indeed the cruelty of sacrifice, but also the fact that sacrifice converts uh, a destructive power yes. within communities, animal communities or human communities, into a force for uh, invention, um, into a force which allows uh, humans to live together despite uh, that destructive potential which they carry within them. But in a way it's against his whole thrust, which is things can be explained simply. Yes. So nature is fundamentally good. Yes. And uh, it's civilization, civilization which spoils, which spoils so. the good aspect yes. of nature. Yes. Right? Whereas in, in a sense your theory is much more simple in that yes. you see uh, that power of destruction as present already in oh, really? animal communities right. um, without any moral implications of course at that point yeah. present again in human communities but in human communities um, converted in some way into a force a civilizational force sure. um, but ambiguously so because the because the, the the inherent element of violence, we we stand on violence. We never get free of violence. We, we are, never get free of violence. And and that is um, the deep ambiguity which your thought actually comes to grips with. It seems to me in a way that yeah. so many others don't do. And in a way, for the modern age, Rousseau is very important because he seems to provide an explanation that shows. Uh, that religion is a useless complication of something which would come about, yes. which should come about in a Rousseau-esque way, yes. in a few explanatory yes. 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 sentences. Yes, so harmony and, uh, and goodness are natural, uh, and then we have to explain everything right. else, like violence, because in struggle. Rousseau, Rousseau fundamentally is speaking against the Christian idea of original sin. Yes. I would say yes. it's so profound in him that even when he's not aware of it, Yes. He's still speaking against original sin. Yes. And certainly my own theory is the opposite in yes. the sense that, yeah. So in culture itself, original sin is still there. And it's original sin which in a way protects you from original sin. Yes, it's a yeah. self-defense mechanism yeah, yeah. Defense of defense. the uh, sinning creature sure. in a way, isn't it? And so. what also wants to prove is that uh, no such uh, tricky mechanism, yes. complexity is necessary. Yes. That's why reading him is so impressive at first, mm. I would say. Mm. Yeah. And uh, it's clear from your works that you think that Rousseau has many descendants, that um, not least the Every, anthropologists and ethnologists of the yeah. uh, 19th Everybody. century and the early 20th century. Sure. I mean, though, our century is fundamentally still Rousseauistic, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And is Dawkins one of those? Dawkins is uh, probably, I've never considered him in that light, but one could show that, uh, yeah, he's, he, he's probably not in some of his uh, uh, evolutionary analysis, which are only concerned with showing the evolution, you know, of uh, 
the evolutionary aspect of culture. But when he speaks about religion and uh, violence, and he certainly is. Most scientists would have the Dawkins view. Not all, but quite a few. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I, I think there are more people today who realize that the question of evolution and creation, I mean, it cannot be regarded as just two simple concepts, you know, that are opposed to each other. Mm -hmm. No doubt. But it doesn't go far enough, usually, mm -hmm. for them to question, you know, mm -hmm. either to question, among the people who are not religious, the anti-religious thrust Mm. of evolution. The thing which is naive in 19th century thinking is to think, not to realize that religion has something to do with the origin of man, with the organization of first society. They could very well, they didn't want to launch on that road. You see, therefore they have a purely philosophical view yeah. of religion. Yes. It's very visible with Auguste Comte. Uh -huh. you know? yes. There are three stages the stage is uh, the most primitive stage uh, is the religious stage, where the explication is purely irrational. Then comes the philosophical stage, which isn't much better, but a little bit less stupid. Yes. You see what I mean? Then comes 19th century science. Yes, is, yes, 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 yes. That's, uh, uh, that was the general view. Yes, but, but it's still Dawkins' view. It's still Dawkins' view. Yes. Yeah, still. that's why he's extremely naive. Yes. The people who have been interested in imitation usually have a, uh, what should I say, a negative view of imitation. There is something uh, imitative about mm -hmm. imitation, therefore it's not original, mm -hmm. it's not singular, it's the uh, multiplicity, it's, uh, it's the beno, mm -hmm. you know, the commonplace. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, imitation fundamentally has been unpopular with philosophers and scientists. With scientists, there have been moments, and then it seems too simple. Mm. So I think the most important thing in my whole business is really the simplest discovery, which is the most fundamental of my work, is that if you imitate everything, you imitate also desires. Mm. And you imitate the desires of the people for whom you have the greatest esteem, appreciation, mm. love, uh, consideration, and suddenly you find yourself a rival of that person. <clears throat> and maybe the first and most important unconscious is the fact that you do not immediately see the logic of what's going on which is as simple as possible if you define it as I just did. If mm. you imitate the desire of someone, you desire mm. what he desires. Mm. If you desire what someone desires, and the object is uh, one, the great mystery of imitation, I think it's rivalry. Because uh, that's what Aristotle didn't say. Because we think in unsophisticated psychological terms mm -hmm. without taking into account the dimension of rivalry. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, rivalry is a subject intellectuals don't like to talk about. Mm -hmm. And of course from this to go to the idea that intellectuals are fundamentally competing with each other, it took me very little time to do that. I felt that uh, uh, the more you approach that uh, mimetic problematic, the more you become able to criticize from uh, several viewpoints, uh, our psychology and uh, our sociology, our 